So we've got uh, four built-in instruments. Um, we got the impact drum machine, like I talked to you about, with a bunch of presets from Ubershaw, some nice drum sounds there. We've got Mojito, which is uh, a bass synth. Typical monophonic style, you know, bass synth that you want to have. Uh, Presence is a ROM player. You know, your, your typical kind of does everything, band in a box kind of ROM player. Um, which is actually really good. It plays sound fonts as well. So I've been downloading loads of free sound fonts off the web and just throwing them into this thing. And it's got an excellent effects section. So I actually really like that. I use it a lot. And, what uh, sort of effects are included? Oh, the effects are great. Let me just open it up again. I'll show you. Um, so we've got uh, modulation effects like flanging and chorus. We've got a graphic EQ, panning, delay, reverb, just lots of nice distortions. Um, and uh, the thing I like here is the gated synth thing, which you've got lots of different gate patterns, which is great for doing trancey techno kind of stuff. Are they editable by the user? And these are not editable yet, but uh, there's just some built-in pattern. And sample one, which is a little sampler. I mean, it's a very simple sampler. It's not going to replace your contacts. But what's lovely about this is it's also drag and drop. So if I want to like use that, as a, just pull something out of the arrange window or out of the browser and drop it into the sampler, and it's automatically there. And you'll see it automatically understands the regions, so I can set up the keys, I can set up my root note, whatever I want, loop it, whatever. So it's again, it's it's a great little sampler. I love it um, just for dragging and dropping basic things in and just play away. The great thing about this is the speed. It's so fast to do anything. You don't have to think and you don't sit there. And, you're not fighting against the software all the time. It's just drag and drop, just make it work. Get on and be creative. Just then. get on and be creative. <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, VST plugins uh, obviously run as well. I've got Core Player in here for Native Instruments. Again, I can just drag and drop that straight onto a track, and right away it's in the song. Um, and then just double click and load up a song or sound if I want to. Um, that's how easy it is. Wow. So there's no messing around with trying to wire things up and figure out how they work. Now, same thing for effects. I mean, what I love about the effects, I can drag and drop the effects. So we've got a bunch of, a lot of really good effects. Um, Ampires are a guitar amp, which is really nice, actually. And we got their typical flanger, chorus, delays, etc. But if I want to put an effect on a track, like, say, uh, let's say I take this track. If I want to put an effect on that, I don't have to open up a mixer window and, and figure out what to go and all the rest of it. I can just drag the effect or even drag a preset. So, or I can even drag a whole chain of effects. Okay, so if I want a drum set of effects, I go to drums here, and I've got kick drum, bass drum, channels, whatever, drum bus drum. Let's try drum group. Okay, you can see in that drum group, there's an EQ and a multiband dynamics. I can just drag the folder across and put it straight on the track. And it adds both those effects onto that drum bus. That's all there is to it. Wow. And if I go down to the channel here, you can see it's put the EQ and the dynamics into the channel automatically. Mm. So I can drag and drop straight onto the mixer or drag and drop into the arrange window and I'll get my effects. And if I click on it, I can actually see the EQ right there on the mixer and I can, I can even edit it inside here. Or I can double click it. There we go. I can double click it and see it's a plugin window. What I love about this is I have a spectrum analyzer inside the EQ. So I can see what I'm doing as well as hear what I'm doing. That's always a good thing to, to have that yeah. visual Right, I love, that have, I love having use. that visual feedback. Yeah. Because I'm always using, in the studio I use a spectrum analyzer a lot, but it was always a pain in the ass to patch it in. Yeah. Here it's just built into the program. And the EQ sounds great, by the way, because it's a 64-bit audio engine. Mm. This is not the kind of audio engine you'll get in any other digital audio program. It's a brand new audio engine. And all the built-in effects, EQs, everything are fully 64-bit. So yeah, I mean, you've got your plugins there. I mean, you can bring up your multiband dynamics, also like that. Typical multiband dynamics, the kind of thing is, again, drag and drop, you'll know this in any other sequencer. It's pretty cool. So you can drag and drop individual effects or whole chains of effects. And we have loads and loads of presets, lots of guitar presets. I mean, if I want to plug a guitar in, no problem. Let's say I want a blues guitar. Well, the blues guitar has got a whole bunch of effects in it. I'll just drag that across to there, and it automatically makes a track. And all I've got to do is plug my guitar straight into the box now, 
and it will come up with all of those effects. So uh, we go to track 25, let's have a look here. You'll see it comes up with a gate, a tuner, a phaser, a guitar amp, and a reverb automatically. So you just plug your guitar in and start playing. That is real plug and play. Isn't it? It's absolutely <laughs> plug and play. So you know, there's there's the tuner right there, and uh, there's my phaser. There's the guitar amp. I love the guitar amp. I like the way when and the look at the cursor on the guitar amp. Uh, it's it's <laughs> rock and roll. Um, uh, and even the face plate's all cracked like a real amp. Um, again, sounds we've got tons and tons and tons of loops. The uh, the artist version comes with four gigs of loops. And uh, the pro version comes with nine gigabytes, two DVDs full of loops. Mm -hmm. We've got a load of Uber Channel drums, things and things like that. A lot of different loops for every kind of music. Lots of different instruments. Uh, we ship core player um, with a bunch of extra core player instruments automatically. Uh, we ship guitar rig LE as well. So you've got two choices for guitars. And we ship twin tracks, easy drum and light. And that's all even with the artist version. Um, one of the really nice things that I love is remote control. Um, let's just open Core Player and see how the remote control works. You'll see here I've got, I've got eight knobs on Core Player, and I'd like to be able to automate those. Well, let's show you how you automate that. If I go here, let's, let's go to my Axiom. And here you can see what the Axiom looks like. These are all the remote controls in the Axiom. And if I turn the knobs, you know, actually this Axiom isn't set up. Let's, let's just let's make a new one. I will show you how to make a completely new remote control system. Now, in any other software, this would take me about four hours, right? Let's show you how to make a new device. I'm going to make a new device. I'm going to say new keyboard. Let's say it's a brand new keyboard, and I'm just going to call it test, uh, test keys, right? Okay. And I'm going to ask it to receive from the Axiom. Okay. I'll make that my default. All right. So set up. I have to go slow so you can follow me. Mm -hmm. This is so quick. Right, I've just set up a new keyboard. All right, so here's my test keyboard. Now, um, Studio One doesn't know anything about this keyboard. It's never seen it before. So I say MIDI learn, and I just turn all my knobs. And as I turn, each knob I turn, automatically it learns what those knobs are, <laughs> right? So now I'm gonna move my faders, and I'm gonna put eight faders in there. Okay, so it knows I get it. Well, actually, those should be faders. Well, that's no problem. I just right click and say and make those into faders. It's ridiculously easy, isn't it? Yep. So now Studio One knows exactly what my controller system is. It doesn't matter what controller system that is, it'll automatically work. So it knows that's what it is. So now I want these, devi these devices to operate the core player. So, okay, I move this knob here. If I move a software control, you can see up on the top left, you can see that that software control, it says core player volume. And I move a hardware control, I'll move one knob here, and you can see up on the top left, it knows it's controller one from my keyboard. Then all I gotta do is say, link those two together, and now, that controller knob controls that knob on core player. Mm -hmm. Very, very easy, that's what, all I need to do. Right, so I can go through all my different knobs and set up my instrument. But what happens if, for example, uh, I now want this to control sample one? Maybe I want to control the cutoff in sample one. Well, I turn the controller in sample one, tell it what my keyboard is, turn the controller in sample one, turn my knob again, and hook those together. So now controller one is controlling the filter in sample one. But if I switch to core player and turn my knob, it also controls it. So, so whichever what, what, plugin is, is front in forward, focus, yeah. in front and forward, it automatically knows how to control that one plugin. So one controller can control every plugin, EQ, effect, anything you want individually. So whenever Windows at the front, it automatically just works. Great. And if I have more than one controller, I can say I want my keyboard just to control a core player. If I have something like an MPD, I can say I want that to control my drum machine. So if, you, if you're like me and you have a lot of controllers, you can assign which controller does what, and it takes you literally five minutes.